G'day, welcome to my next video in the string challenge as we continue to make a single line all the way around the world. Uh, and we are going to continue in Africa. So we'll just jump nice and quick just into Togo. Luckily, where we ended up in Ghana, let's put us right next to it. Uh, we'll make sure the loam is of a decent size. Now, I don't know if Togo is really going to be... give us too many cities. Potentially, what, three? And I would think that possibly people do live up in this section of this, the country. If there are cities up here in Ghana, uh, it would suggest that there is still plenty of habitable land uh, in the top here. But, I guess we'll find out eventually. So, while we're doing that, let's have a look at some places that are struggling a little bit. So this guy is heading Guadalajara, so that's heading north. So that is still this route on the top that's struggling, so let's give them just a slightly bigger plane. See if that'll help that. Thunder Bay is heading south. Looks like it's a problem. Which will be this one. So let's... A tiny little bit. It sounds like we've got a new city over here. Easy connection there. I probably should grab Bannon at the same time because I imagine that these two I can just sort of uh, connect along the top. I mean, a lot of this should be restructured that it, it almost like just works across and back down. funny that this is pronounced Niger, but this is pronounced Nigeria, even though the ER at the end of Nigeria is its own clear thing, so it means this is pronounced Niger, and that's Niger. But I mean, as an English speaker, I'm one to talk with, with the bizarre rules that our language follows. Alright, you're not looking too crash hot. It's stuff heading north, which will be this side of it. So let's give him a 300 seater. Oh, we're just going to wait for him to fix it up a little bit. At least we can see this guy here isn't really bringing anything much over. I mean, these two are very short routes, so it's basically as that one red plane hits here, it means that this guy will bring a red lot over. Since these two can make their round trips faster than this guy can. This guy doesn't get worse unless... Until this guy's actually done his his bit. But that is also showing that this one here isn't... Suffering a little bit, but we might just up him a bit. Because maybe that's just deceptive because it's a small, small city. Now, I would like to speed things up, but I do think the game's starting to get jumpy again. We'll let it run for a little bit on this. Possibly if I zoom in enough, it's not too bad. I still think it's pretty bad. Certainly thinking about it a lot more when we, uh, when we do it, so maybe we'll make it easy. I would say the next one that we'll do is we'll get Bannon. And then maybe just... the Burkina Faso. And then... Maybe from there we'll go into Niger. And at that point it means that we'll have Mali fully surrounded. And then it'll allow us to connect Mali to any direction. So if Mali works in a logical way where we can just sort of run through it... Um... We might do that, but otherwise I think that possibly all we want to do is just, um, if there's a city down here, let's just connect it in here. If there's a city up here, let's connect it like that. 
because I don't expect there to be too much going on through this whole middle section. All right, so with this guy, what we'll do is we'll just sort of treat these two countries as a one single sort of uh, way heading up. I don't see any point in sort of coming down. Uh, like going up through Togo and then coming back down through Benin. Washington and Paris. So it's actually the short side that's struggling here. Let's see, Swift Current is struggling too. And that's Houston. That's this side. So we'll give them a little extra. Billings is also struggling, but that's the other direction, I think. Yeah. So it looks like there's just a struggle point of anyone making it through this gap. So maybe what we need to do is actually get this guy more significant. Just give him a proper third full speed plane, because I'd say that those two are just going to be working overtime there. Otherwise... Alright, let's see what that gave us. Arakau. Remember when I went to, um... When I went to South Africa and went to Johannesburg Airport and I was flying to uh, Antenna Navarro in Madagascar, the section of Johannesburg Airport that I went to, just the international section, went down to this section where there was a whole bunch of basically buses. So what, you, what you're doing there at, um, at the airport was you would take a bus to where you would then just sort of do a, um, a ground boarding onto the plane. And looking at the board of all the cities that this, well, this wasn't, in, uh, yeah, all the cities that you were about to connect to that were basically your smaller plane internal African cities, I was like, I've never heard of 90% of these. And it did definitely make me feel like there's a whole huge part of the world that, that I've got to learn about. Just say you sit in Melbourne International Airport and you can recognize every city that you places are going to. I mean, the other alternative one was once I was in the, uh, the international section of the Ulaanbaatar airport in Mongolia, and the entire day's international journeys were, uh, were just on one screen, so I think it was about 10, 10 flights were heading out of Ulaanbaatar for the day, which is also a neat thing to see. So that's all this one. So I would say that means that we do need to get another guy going. There is also a weird imbalance on the way that this route is currently going. There's, um, there's a huge gap, I think after this guy. Uh, in front of this guy, I think it is. But I don't think there would be any harm in putting five full-fledged planes on these two routes. Like I said, it's it's this single route here is probably the route that um, all other planes are going to be measured on. Like if this route is struggling, adding more planes to everywhere else isn't going to help that. Basically, it would almost slow them down. To give that a better, better chance. Um, but there is also only so many passengers that are out there. Um, it's not going to work that if I, if I have more planes, there's going to be more passengers. It's only going to be if I have more destinations that there'll be more passengers. 
So I mean, over time, it's going to get worse anyway. But all right, so let's up that guy. That's yeah. So that's a ten thousand. See the one we might. I just wait till that guy's off there, and then. Go on full out as well. This a little bit more time. Houston, Mexico City. So that's this side throughout. So we'll give him a little 300 seater. Might mean that that guy has to get upgraded too, because this is not very long, but it's the longest flight within the internal United Kingdom Ireland Islands. Go right and look at where people were going to Boston. That's north out of that, I think. Yeah, not a big one, just 300. Oh, I was even tempted to give it a hundred. Monterey. So that's what its short route is struggling. I'll just give that one a hundred seater, see if that helps. For anyone else, the sound has really jacked itself back up here, but let's uh try and turn that down a bit because this is really blaring at me. Alright, probably if we're gonna lose anywhere, we might route Bannon's the most ideal candidate. So we've forgotten to upgrade a few of these guys at the back here too. See, it will still let me build an upgrade while we wait. All right, so it's a good point there to be up in the north as we go into Kina Faso. So I'm just going to upgrade him for the time being. I'm not going to add add him to the layout. I just want to see where we get cities and whether this is going to be better off going that way or if he's better off going this way and that we sort of more just add the Kinefaso to the inside of um, Ghana's routes. That looks broken-y. I don't know if it's, it's just suddenly glitched, so we've got to do our save load. I will just give him a, a little assist. Imagine you get on the 100 seater, like you'd enjoy it for the exclusivity, but it's taking you so much longer to get anywhere. That's all north. It's all south. Portland, this Portland. 
Sorry, where were they going? Lima. Dallas. So that's the southern. Which is this one? I might just give Boston a little bit of a boost too, because that's already been struggling, has struggled for a while. But we'll give you just an extra little bit to help move it along. York, so that's going to be this side. Back to Portland. Make another city's come in. real shame to not be able to just like sort of crank this for a while but it I wonder how many of these flights really exist like if you were trying to look this up if you were trying to replicate say this the flight path that you would have to take to get from the southern tip of South America all the way through to where this ends. What routes wouldn't, wouldn't exist? What if you then tried to change your string challenge so that a secondary rule was that you had to be able to actually do all these flights? I think the problem with that would be that say somewhere like, like I said, Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia and he has 10 uh, international flights a day, so surely any city other than Ulaanbaatar that comes up in Mongolia, surely then there's not going to be many that will fly externally to to this, the country, so that would make it tricky. Well, even at this far out version of looking at it, we can see we've got some red cities down here. Guys, Atlanta. So that sounds like it's actually the this side that's struggling. This guy that's not looking great. He's also that side. Get another city up here. And so far, this is definitely making the argument for just being tucked into this part of the route rather than being at the end of Benin. Depending on where, say, Nigeria fits into this too, we could actually go up and then down, and then it's this city that connects through to Nigeria. Or alternatively, we could connect this, we could come uh, around here, down this way and back, and then it's somewhere down here that we connect to Nigeria. Billy, Mexico, so that's this side. So let's take that 300 seater and make him a 500 seater. There we go, a new Togo city. Mango. Well, we haven't done it today, so let's have a read about Mango. Mango Togo. Population of about 41,000 people as of 2007. Uh, record high temperature is 44.4 degrees. For any Americans, it'd be 112 Fahrenheit. Record low temperature is only 12.1 degrees Celsius, 53 degrees Fahrenheit, so definitely a warm part of the world. I mean, the... What do you call it? Equator runs somewhere through here. 
so it's definitely right near the equator, so not surprising that it's it's hot. I would imagine it's quite humid as well. What are they manufacturing mango? What's the main economy? That's right, cattle and peanuts. If you guessed cattle and peanuts, you have correctly identified what Mango Togo does. Now we've got a different mapped out path that we could actually do here. We could run Mita Mango. Sorry, I would try and say its name, but it's uh, Natty Natty Tingu. Natty Tingu. We could run like this around because even doing like a an our cut into Ghana, uh, like one city in here somewhere, I guess. But, I mean, I don't really want him to be the, the current end of my line. It was funny, I did meet a guy who, um, uh, on a trip I took who worked in Saudi Arabia, he was English, he worked in Saudi Arabia doing, um, it was Milk Farmer, which was a really, I guess, surprising thing to consider that there obviously are still milk farms that go on in places like Saudi Arabia, it's just more that you, I guess your cows are in shelter and they're, they're being fed, not off grass, sort of, I guess, brought in wheat and whatnot. I guess the question is, where's the capital of Nigeria? I think we could probably look that up. Uh, capital of Nigeria. Is, is pretty, it looks like it's located about there. So we actually might not be in the worst place in the world connecting to one of these two cities. So... What way should we switch this? Alright, let's sell that. Let's slow down time so it's not as jumpy while we do this. Go here. The one in the middle. Change my mind, I'm guessing that guy's not upgraded, yep. Um Let's go like that. Because I'd say that this guy is gonna be just closer to there than this guy is. It's funny too, just the um, like say, just thinking about how they and mango they make peanuts and things. I 
um, again, because it's the only part of Africa I've been to, so a lot of my stories will come back to the southern tip. But in Madagascar, there were trees everywhere. Just like, sort of, you'd go to a park and there's an avocado tree. And it was a... It, it was such a foreign idea to them that these are incredibly expensive in, say, like, however much you'd pay for them in, in Australia or other parts of the Western world. Because we don't grow them. I guess we, we import them or there's more demand than supply. So, like, on the reverse side of the, the amount that we can just... The amount of access to other things that we have that they don't have. But this one thing that is so common for them is such a sort of, like, expensive rarity uh, for us. They really did have a lot of, um... Uh, that... Uh, college um, and American sports and American college sort of gear uh, in Madagascar too so I guess those things that don't sell in the US that they then um, donate or, or sell in bulk cheaply to African nations you could definitely see that on display there uh, I know our guide was wearing a Clemson hoodie so it just had like an orange paw print on it and he didn't know who Clemson was, obviously. It's not a big deal to him. Um, but I was there in 2019, which if I'm, if I'm timelining that correctly, I think that February... So I, that was about August 2019. And that February 2019, I think, was when the Rams lost to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And I thought, well, if that thing still exists where they make a whole ton of Super Bowl champion Rams shirts before like before the game and then they find out which team won it wasn't the rams let's just give them to africa i thought if i see anyone wearing a super bowl champions rams jersey i'll definitely uh definitely try and grab that luckily this year it became a lot easier to grab one of those t-shirts <laughs> they also had a lot of um there was an election i think recently so there were a lot of people wearing a shirt with one of the i think the, the the guy that actually won's face on it um, because he just, as as part of his campaign, he just gave people shirts. And, um, and I was like, I wouldn't mind getting one of those shirts. And I asked my, because um, you just saw them everywhere. And I thought oh, that'd be a really cool sort of like collector's item, just a, someone pitching for, for the uh, president of, of Madagascar. And I asked our guy, like, oh, would I be able to get one? Like, would you have some somewhere? And he was like, it was wasn't sure like be careful where you wear it because of, of like what he might like you might be saying that you support politically like in, in if you're in madagascar it's just a shirt like it's it's because you don't have any other shirts but, but no, i didn't, didn't end up getting one unfortunately And it was a, I think the, the thing I did find as well from being in Madagascar and seeing this level of um, uh, poverty, I suppose is what it was. Um, it, I When I posted pictures back, I did have some people post on the pictures saying like how like sad it seemed and how sorry you were for the people. And I actually don't think it, it was that at all because they weren't sad. These, these people weren't... Um, it's not like they'd been anywhere in the world where, like, they'd got to see what life was like and then come back here and then was living in misery. These, they were just, this is how life is. And the amount of joy that they took for simple things was fantastic. It was, as opposed to, um, I think, feeling sadness, it was more interesting to see how easily these people's day could be made. And then you consider how easily your day can be ruined, that it made you go like, this is possibly like a, a better outlook on the way of, of doing things. And there were really neat things like say, you would go to a, a remote village and kids would just want you to take their picture. And you immediately have that thought of like, oh wait, do they want money for it? Cause they just want you to sort of like, they want to take, like they want to sort of just be the tourist trap of, they get you, you take their picture. So you pay them for the privilege of having the picture. Not at all. It is purely that a lot of these places don't have mirrors or anything. So you taking their picture and then showing them that picture might be the only chance that they get to see in a while of them getting to see themselves. And so it was a really cool thing because you just got to go, cool, look at this. What do you think? And they just, all right, take my picture again. Like they were just having so much joy 
from it. It was a really, um, really neat thing. That doesn't seem like it's moving too much. I'm gonna have to up that guy, I would say. We definitely won't add anyone else to the end of this one, so hopefully it means that we'll just get... I mean, I think those three countries are looking quite quite nice and full. But hopefully it just sort of means that any country that we've potentially skipped too fast over, like Senegal's looking a bit bare, for surely there's more people than, than what we're seeing there in Senegal, and Ivory Coast and Ghana have a bit of gaps. So hopefully we... If anyone wants to pop up in the next few minutes, it's still to fill out places that otherwise no if uh, if you ever do get the chance to go to to Africa I would recommend it as well I from like I said I've only been to a tiny part but I'm eager to to see more of it um one one funny thing about traveling i think is is to see is is to be aware of the, the touristy aspects of going somewhere um when i was a teenager i'm sure i've mentioned this before i went to tijuana and that was obviously like one of the worst case scenarios that you can get because that is it that is a city basically built to try and sell things to tourists and so it's just, it's it's a lot of sort of, I, I don't know, I just remember not enjoying it. We, we sort of walked one of the streets and, and me and my brother were like, oh, we can, we can sit out the rest of this. And my, I think my parents did another, another walk of it. All right, so if Havana's going for New York, then that's south out of Havana, isn't it? That's actually this guy that's somehow the one struggling there. I've got to be careful because that could just sort of push all of that. Um, and it was interesting to see uh, when we did, uh, when I did the, uh, the trip that sort of went through Mongolia, China, and India. In Mongolia, we were in the main square of the capital city, and a guy just walked up with some like pictures, and he was like, would you like to buy some pictures? And we said, no, thank you. Okay, and he left. That was it. In China, they're not too bad. They, um, you'd sort of like, you'd be walk you'd be at the Great Wall of China or somewhere significant and you'd walk past, say, five meters beyond where they are and they would sort of like call out to you like water or, or thing and, and you'd sort of be like, no, thanks. <laughs> you could just like continue on your way. Um, in Tibet, uh, they they didn't really get up too much for you to, to do anything. They Some of them, if they had any English, they might say, looky, looky. Um, which they did say, like, I did have that phrase said at me a fair few times. I, I even remember once I tried to haggle with a guy where I, I pointed out something and he told me the price and I offered a lower price that I was hoping that he would then up on. He was like, no, <laughs> just went back inside. Um, so they definitely weren't too pushy. And then we got to India and, and our... Um, Glide said, you've just got to ignore them. You've got to blank and pretend they don't exist. Because uh, otherwise, if, if you give them any time of day, they are going to just follow you. And and, and like, because I think if they can get in at all, then then you've, they've got you on the hook. So I'm I'm very glad that India was the last part of that trip because I would I would feel sorry for the... If, if we went into... Um, China or, or Mongolia with that same attitude of just blanking people when 
when they would like a polite decline would would do the job. Yellow knife, all right. Yellow knife is always going to be one of my little problem children here. That's Mexico City, so that's heading south. Let's give them just a three hundred seater. Surprised that he's suddenly become so efficient. But you can see there's green planes that are coming back off him, which means that all of this must be heading that other direction. So maybe we'll up him one more time. All right, there we go. We've reached the end of another one. Three more countries into the mix. Uh, I would say next time the end of the line is here. So we might go to Nigeria and Mali as our next two. We're almost all the way around Mali. I'd say that we can we'll probably swing in from most directions, but similar to... Uh, Burkina Faso will probably just sort of like get all the cities and then join the dots together as opposed to doing a one, one sort of one join one ad. But until then, I will catch you later. See ya.